everybody. It's Jamie from Play to Learn Preschool. Happy Monday. I hope you had an awesome weekend. We did. Uh, I had some company and the plumbers who we talked about on Friday um, were not able to fix my leak, so they'll be back again this week. Anyway, a few of you have um, left messages or posted on my Facebook while asking about Friday's video. For whatever reason, the Facebook video, um, the audio and the video were off. Like the sound was like two seconds ahead of our mouths. I don't know why it did that. Um, I don't think it was anything on my end. I think just some kind of connection problem maybe with Facebook. But the video is obnoxious to watch because it wasn't matching. You know, like the words didn't match our voices or you know our mouths. It was really hard to watch. So I went ahead and deleted it. So sorry about that. That's kind of the thing with Facebook Live is I can't see them ahead of time and edit the video or anything. So I'm sorry if you didn't get to catch that one, um, but there'll be more. So hi, it's good to see you. Today I thought I would share a few ideas with you for um, math. One of our um, curriculum, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. One of our strategies, our objectives, uh, in Virginia. So they have a document called the Virginia Foundation Blocks of Early Childhood Education. If you don't have a curriculum or a curriculum map, it's a really good document. It has some really good ideas for literacy, math, science, social studies, and the arts. I'll leave a link to it um, up in the video description. But one of the math goals uh, in the found math foundation blocks is that our preschoolers start to understand computation, which is changes in sets of objects. In layman's terms, that means that they're starting to understand addition and subtraction, which actually sounds really hard for our three and four year old students, right? We definitely don't do any worksheets or flashcards or anything for addition and subtraction. So um, we need to find developmentally appropriate ways to meet that computation goal in the Virginia Foundation Blocks. Oh good, somebody else is familiar with the Foundation Blocks. They're awesome. I mean, it's a really good set of um, objectives and goals for the students. So what I thought I would do is share five ideas with you for how we practice computation, which is changes in sets of objects, uh, adding more objects and taking some away in a very friendly, preschool, developmentally appropriate way. And I also get to show you some of those awesome puppets I got at the NACI conference. So I guess I will start with one of those, um, those puppets. So I know we played with this, I think, on like three different videos when we were in Los Angeles. But <clears throat> puppets and finger plays are the way to go when we're talking about computation. And we don't need to worry about computation like addition and subtraction facts to 10 or 12 or anything like that. In preschool, we are talking about computation to five. We want our students to understand completely with objects and hands-on experiences how to make a group of five. You could have one and four, two and three, three and two, um, and how to, what happens when you have five and you take one away. So if you're thinking, I need to teach my students how to add groups to 10 or 12, stop. We really in preschool just want to focus, especially in the threes class and especially at the beginning of the pre-K year on groups of five because that is manageable for our students. So start thinking about how you can practice five. And I'm sure what comes to mind is all of those five little finger plays, right? Five little monkeys, five little bears, five little everything, five little ducks, five speckled frogs. And that's how we're teaching computation through finger plays that are talking about groups up to five and back down to zero or one. And so I'm gonna share some of those with you. And I want you to start to think about those little things that we do just as preschool teachers. What objectives are they meeting? And in this case, those finger plays are teaching computation. So um, I know we share these a bazillion times, but seriously, people, these are the cutest puppets. So this little five little monkeys swinging in a tree um, with teasing Mr. Alligator. I just want to kind of talk through like what's happening to the students. So let's say we get down to two little monkeys. Two little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator, sneaky as can be, snaps that monkey right out of that tree. Well, what have the students just done? They just subtracted. There were two, right? This little tail gets in the way. There were two, we take away one. How many are left? 
one monkey. And I'll even say that sometimes with my students. Um, you know, oh, there were five and he snapped one out of the tree. How many are left? And they say, four. I say, you're right, five minus one is four. I just keep singing. I don't, you know, we don't drill them, but I'm put, planting that vocabulary in their mind. So I know I've shared that one a bunch of times, so I won't share it again. But here's another good one. Um, so these are the bears in the bed. And this one goes, there were five in the bed and the little one said, oh, I'm singing without Gemma. She's gonna be so upset. Roll over. And I rolled them all over. I'm crowded. So they all rolled over and one fell out. How many were left? There were four in the bed and the little one said, roll over. I'm crowded. So they all rolled over and one fell out. There were three in the bed and we're subtracting. There were five and then there were four. Then there were three. And then they get down to one. There was one in the bed and the little one said, I'm lonely, come back. So one, they jumped back in and snuggled down. There were five in the bed and the little one said, good night. And so that is how we're teaching. There were five, we took one away, he fell out. How many were left? And we'll have the kids count them. There were four, good. There were four in the bed, one fell out. How many were left? And they all say, three. Good, there were four and one fell out, that's three. And so we're planting that seed of computation in their heads in this very hands-on, developmentally appropriate way. So the next one I'm gonna share with you is actually more of an addition finger play. And I saw this on Pinterest. I will leave a link for it. I should have looked for it before I went live, but um, for these little finger puppets. And I have a, had a very crafty mom. Hey, Kathleen, thanks for the awesome puppets. Uh, a couple of years ago, and I just sent her the picture and said, like, oh, I wish I, I wish I could make these felt puppets. I wish you know somebody would make them. And she's like, I've got it. And the next day, she made them, but um, it goes like this. These are little owl puppets, and they're just a piece of felt that she glued. It's like a rectangle of felt, and then glued little eyes and little wings. How cute are those? And so it's one little owl. Um, when the moon was new, along came another owl. And then there were two, two little owls sitting in the tree. Along came another owl. And then there were three, three little owls flew in the barn door. Along came another owl. And then there were four, four little owls lined up side by side. Along came another owl. And then there were Five. And so we start with one, we add one more, that makes two, add one more, that makes three. And so we're adding up these owls all the way to five. They say, five little owls shouted, hoo, hoo, hoo. They all flapped their wings and away they flew. And so we're adding up to five, subtracting back down to five. I wanted to show you um, another way that I talk this through with my students. So I've got this one set up on my other hand, hold on. Um, and I'm sure that, again, this is a song that you're familiar with. This is a storytelling glove that I got from, I'm gonna say Lakeshore. It's been a really long time ago. And it's like a felt glove. And these pieces have Velcro on the back. Can you kind of see that? And they stick to the glove. So this is five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. And I always have the kids yell, yum, yum. <laughs> One jumped into the pool and I stick it on the back, the pool, where it was nice and cool. Now there are four green speckled frogs. So I'll say to the students, let's count the frogs. One, two, three, four on the log. How many are in the pool? And they all shout, One. Let's check to see if you're right. You're right, there's one in the pool. Four green and speckled frogs sat on the speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. And the kids all shout, yum, yum. <laughs> One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are one, two, three green speckled frogs. I'll say to the students, how many do you think are in the pool? And then they flip it around. Yes, there are two. So they're, you can see how they're making those sets, right? Three on the log two in the pool. And how many did we start with? Five. And so they're making those connections, those word or those number families. Um, 
and addition and subtraction all in this very developmentally appropriate visual hands-on way. So three green and speckled frogs sat on the speckled log eating some most delicious bugs and the kids all yell, yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two green speckled frogs. How many are in the pool, everybody? Three, there are three that jumped into the pool. And so they're adding it up. Two on the log and three in the pool, that's still five frogs. And so this is how we practice computation in a very developmentally appropriate, hands-on, friendly, playful way. And then the last one that I want to show you is, um, uh, it's not a puppet. These are actually chip clips. Found them at the dollar store. They were three for a dollar. How awesome is that? And I stuck them on a piece of wood. And it's gonna be backwards because you know Facebook does that weird thing with the camera. Um, but I stuck five ducks on this, it's just like a chunk of wood, and I put these felt, you know those fuzzy stickers that were at the Target dollar spot last summer? You could just, you could leave it blank or you could just write on them or put any old number stickers. And so this is, five little ducks went out to play, and I did this over the river and far away, when the daddy duck said, quack, 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 only four little ducks came back. And then the kids are like, let's count them. One, two, three, four. How many ducks are missing? Oh, this one's missing. Look, he's down here. Four little ducks went out to play over the river and far away when the daddy duck said, quack, quack, quack. Only three little ducks came back. And this is a very developmentally appropriate. They can touch it, they can count. There's three that are still there. One, two, three and two that didn't come back. You know, I'm hiding behind my back or however I'm gonna do it. And then of course at the end I always say, but when the mommy duck says, quack, 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 and then all of the little ducks came back and we count one, two, three, you know, I'll clip them on. Four, five little ducks came back. And so these are chip clips. Um, and it's just a really nice, easy way. Oh, a paint stick. Wanda says a paint stick, that's a good idea to use a paint stick like from Home Depot or something. Oh, that's a really good idea to clip them on. Good thinking, Wanda. Um, and so I just love to come up with all of these, and of course I'm not coming up with them, right? Everybody's done these finger plays forever, but fun ways for my students to practice adding on up to five and subtracting back to five. And like I was showing you with the speckled frogs, can you make groups of five? There's three on the log and two on the pond or two in the pool. Can we add up those groups of five? So that's a really easy, hands-on way to practice. And it's not a special like activity or anything that we do. In the middle of our day when we take our snack break, we have all the kids go to the bathroom and wash their hands, you know, before they sit down to eat. And it takes like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. So we shake our sillies out. Remember how that one transition, I think it was transition songs I told you. I just play that music and they run over to the carpet for me. So we shake our sillies out and then we do little finger plays or some you know movement songs. And this is just, I just try to do one of these every day. So every day they're practicing making sets up to five and subtracting back down. And that's my idea for you. So use those finger plays that I know we all know to start thinking about that's how we're teaching our students computation. I actually think that there will probably be a part two of this video if these are helpful for you because I had like 10 of these sitting out when I was ready to go live and I'm like, 10 is too many. I think you can get the idea just with these five finger plays, but I have five others um, that are not necessarily puppets. You know, I've got some more that are chip clips and I have some more that are just like laying down, you know, in front of us on a table or whatever. So I will prob, oh, it was Vanessa. She always has all the good ideas, I'm telling you. She said to use the paint stick, good thinking. Um, and so I will probably have like a part two of this video maybe, you know, after Thanksgiving with five more ideas for using finger plays to teach computation, which is addition and subtraction up to five for our preschoolers. So, awesome. It's great to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching the video. I'm not 100% sure that we're gonna go live tomorrow um, afternoon. It's our last day and I actually have somebody coming over right after school, but I will text out um, if you signed up for the Remind text, I will text out if we are gonna go live and if you don't hear from me, then we'll probably miss it. Hope you have, if you're in the US, a wonderful Thanksgiving and I will talk to you soon. Bye everybody, thanks for watching.